In this lesson, we'll be creating custom pattern brushes in Illustrator. Now, a pattern brush is a brush that let's let's just grab our, our brush tool. So if I just drew a stroke and I can actually come over and take a look at my brushes. And if we have our pattern brushes showing, so you might not be able to see this, but make sure you show pattern brushes. Then we can actually apply a pattern brush and you can see it's broken up into uh, different tiles here. We have a side tile and we have corner tiles. And you can also, uh, these other two down here, these are end tiles. And so uh, you, if you have like a, like a shape like this, you might have an, a little custom piece on the end. Or let's say that we had a corner. So just using the rectangle tool, just dragging out a rectangle. So we would actually have a, a piece just for the corners. Now we actually have to define what all of these different pieces are. And so let's go ahead and we're going to create just a simple little pattern brush. So if we can grab our lips tool or you can hit L on your keyboard. And if you don't have your brushes panel open, you can just uh, hit F5 or you can go up to window and hit brushes. And we're going to just draw a, a nice little ellipse, but I don't want uh, a stroke on that ellipse. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I'm going to select the fill color, come over to my color. That's the little uh, palette here. Let's just choose something like red. And we're going to draw just a little ellipse over here. And we don't want it too big because that, however big we make this, this ellipse is how big this is actually going to be uh, when we create this brush stroke. And then once we create that first ellipse, let's drag another one on there, but we'll make sure that one's white. Let's just give it like a nice little highlight. So just keeping it nice and simple. And let's just select both of these ellipses, ellipses, and then we're going to come over to our brushes. And we're just going to drag this right onto the brushes panel. And you can see that it's allowing us to put this somewhere in stacking order. And we'll just drop it anywhere here. And instead of scatter or art, we're going to choose the pattern brush and hit OK. And so uh, just right off the bat, we have some choices to make. Let's go ahead and call this our bead because we're going to make like an easy beaded necklace type of brush. And so for our scale, we do have options here. So if we want pressure sensitivity, we can choose that. Uh, we can also choose uh, rotation and bearing and things like that to have um, uh, an effect on the size. And we also have just the opportunity. So, you know, you can see how large this bead is. Maybe we want the actual scale to be somewhere about 50% or so. And then we can also determine spacing. So if I added spacing to this, you can see that it added spacing in between these beads. Now we can go negative. So if I wanted to go uh, less than zero, I couldn't make it overlap. And then we also have some choices for our corner tile. We can make another bead or something else and uh, turn that into our our corner tile or I'm going to choose auto overlap. So this is a nice little option here that will allow me to choose uh, the same bead uh, for my for my corner. But we need to also determine our inner corner tile. And so let's choose. So these don't the reason why these don't work is because it's uh, we want to make sure that we are keeping this a nice rounded shape. So let's choose auto overlap again. And then we don't really need to determine the start and end for our specific brush stroke. And so we're going to hit OK. Now let's get our brush and we're going to select our. We don't need to double click it, just select it once. And when we just click and drag and make whatever shape we want, then you can see that we're able to uh, create some pretty nice brush strokes. Now we can also uh, once we've drawn those strokes, we can come in and we can bring the size down. So it doesn't work perfectly if if the uh, beads are too large for some of these angles. And so you might want to keep that in mind. And in whatever it is that you're going to create, you know how big it is that you need to make these these different beads. Now you can see that when I brought this down, it didn't affect all of my strokes. But if I double clicked and maybe I brought this scale down hit OK, it's going to apply or at least give me the opportunity to apply it to existing strokes. So you can see it looks a lot nicer uh, if we kept it uh, a little bit smaller. Now what if I wanted to change the color of these brushes? Well, the way it is now, 
if I were to come in and change it to let's say blue, it doesn't, it's not going to affect that stroke. But I can come over to my brushes and double click and I can change my colorization method. Now for this method right now it's set to none. But if I chose tints and hit OK and I applied, then you can see that those other ones dropped out because they were actually white. So if we chose, let's say, uh, red or purple or pink or something like that, then it's going to allow me to apply those tints to that stroke. So, you know, just want to keep that in mind too. So maybe you want to create something like create a brush stroke that's black and white. And then whenever you applied your colors to it, then you'd be able to do that very easily. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of our beads. A very simple little pattern brush that we made. And now we're going to come over to our other artboard over here. So you may have already seen that we have a smaller artboard with some um, some pieces that we're going to use for our pattern. Let's just come over and we're going to take a look at the pieces that we have. We have this the center piece, and then we have these little end pieces. And this is going to be uh, for our rope brush. So I can grab this end piece, and if I put it right here on the end, then you can see that you know, it's, it's able to com complete that pattern. But also, let's zoom in just a little bit so we can see here. So if I wanted to actually take this center piece and I duplicated it, so I'm just going to hold Alt and drag, then I'm also able to, you know, just have this repeat uh, infinitely. And so, you know, it's able to uh, be end to end to end, and it just uh, follows along that pattern. And so this is kind of difficult. Uh, it's not super easy to just make something that can repeat like this. You kind of have to think about when you're building it, you know, you know, what does this end? How is this going to meet up with the other piece? And so, you know, it's helpful to maybe make um, make something that's like half the size and um, just kind of duplicate it and bring it to the end so that uh, it matches up exactly with itself. And so now that we have uh, kind of an understanding of what we have here, let's go ahead and create a pattern brush. Now. You can do this a, a couple different ways. Like, so we took the bead and we just drug it into our our brushes panel, and and that's okay. But we can also do this another way, where we'll go ahead and select this centerpiece, and we're going to come up to Object and Pattern, and we're going to make our rope brush. And so this is giving us a little, a little heads up. Uh, we're going to hit OK. This new pattern, we'll just call this Center because it's only referring to this one little tile here. And we don't need to worry about how this is lining up, but you can see that, you know, it, it is all matching up great. And so if you're in uh, if you're in doubt of how your brush stroke is going to look, you might go ahead and take a look at this preview and see if it's going to match up. And we're going to say uh, done. Just click done up here. And then let's go ahead and define our end pieces because we want to be able to pull those up once we're in our brush our pattern brush pattern editing mode. So again, I'm going to go up to object and we're going to go to the uh, the pattern, and we're going to choose make. And so the this will be our end. And so we're going to hit OK. We're going to call this end. So this one it's going to the left, and so that will be the end. And we're going to click done, and then done again. So this one's going to the right. And so this one will be start. And so let's go ahead and go to object, pattern, make, and click OK. And this will be our start. Awesome. And we're going to select done. Now we can come over to our brushes. And this time we're just going to hit the new button, new brush. And we're going to tell it that we want a new pattern brush and hit OK. So now we don't have anything to start with, but let's go ahead and name our brush Rope. And then we have some tiles that we need to pick out. So you can see we have a selection for our side tile. When we drop this down, let's choose Center. And so now we need to define the corners. Now we didn't make a tile for the corner, but Illustrator is pretty awesome and it can fill that in for us. And let's choose Auto Between. And so what that's going to do is it's just going to take a look at the tiles and it's going to figure out uh, what it, what the pattern should look like for the in-between. And so, you know, we do have a couple options here. We can do auto sliced, auto overlap, uh, but 
auto between I think looks the most natural for rope. And then we have to determine our inner corner. Let's also choose uh, auto between. And then we have the start and the end. So the start, let's choose start. Actually, I guess we got that backwards. So the start is the end. <laughs> the end will be the start. Okay, so we, we named these backwards, but that's okay. And so the the end is actually the one that's going to the right and the start is going to the left. So now that we have all these determined, let's hit OK. And then now we'll come over to our other artboard. Let's grab our brush. We're going to draw a shape here. And so very easily we're able to create that brush pattern. And we can still come in and edit. And so if we wanted to, um, let's say, change the scale, we can adjust the scale a little bit and you can see that we can actually get a preview also of what that brush is looking like and then let's say that we wanted to um, change our colorization method so if we chose tints we could still change the tints or the tints and shades and so tints and shades is going to kind of keep that black value and then um, you know it's just going to barely come in and uh, it's not as true let's say as the just the tint method and then the hue shift. So the hue shift is also uh, a little different. And so probably the one that you would most likely use is either tints or tints and shades. So let's go ahead and apply that. And then let's take a look also if we were to have our uh, rectangle. And we applied our rope. You can see that that corner looks pretty nice. And so you're able to uh, you know, just come in just with a uh, few clicks and create some really nice patterns. And so uh, that brings us to the end of this lesson and the end of this course. So you can see how our brush tools are very, very powerful and we have a lot of, of options here. So, you know, we kind of took a look at the pencil tool and how we're able to create some uh, pretty basic lines, but we're also able to take the width tool in combination with that and even our, our different width profiles and able to give our our line strokes and, and widths, just some variety and kind of make them organic uh, if it suits our project. And we also took a look at, our, at the blob brush and how you can, using a, a tablet with sensitivity, just create some really nice organic looking pieces. And we also took a look at our, our just our traditional brush tool and how we can choose you know different brush strokes and things to um, just have some really nice looking illustrations. And so, you know, take these principles and use them with your own projects, you know, create some uh, great looking patterns, you know, so that you don't have to actually illustrate this whole rope. You just illustrate a little piece and you're able to, you know, create some really nice looking things. So thank you for watching and have a great day.